Hi, I'm Fiona Flynn. I'm joined in the entertainment.e studio with stand-up comedian and actor Terry Alderton. Terry is known for his rather unusual stand-up, which sees him incorporate some of the voices in his head into his routine. But as well as that, he's also known for his many acting roles, including playing the boyfriend of Bianca Jackson in EastEnders, as well as The Bill, London's Burning, many, many more. Terry is set to play the Vodafone comedy Carnival in Galway on October 24th, 25th and 26th, and he joins me now. Hello. How are you, Terry? Very good, thank you very Welcome much. Welcome to Ireland. I know you just flew thank in this you morning. Very much. Yes, I have. Very nice. Enjoying yourself so far? I have enjoyed myself and the sun's out as well. It is. Yeah. It's a Sunny cracker out. of a day. It is a cracker of a day. Yeah, yeah. It's, I'm, enjoying, I'm enjoying the crack. The crack. Of, uh, the, of the day. <laughs> yeah. Um, Terry, I have to say, the more and more I watch your stuff, the more I love it. Oh, thank you. Like, at the beginning, <laughs> it's sort of like, what's going on? This yeah, yeah, day? yeah. Like, and then, like, by the end, I was, like, cracking up. Oh, good. Um, so, I suppose, for someone who hasn't seen you before, your stand-up is quite unusual. How would you yeah. describe your, uh, your act for someone who hasn't seen it before? That's always a question to, I get asked, and it's... I suppose it's a good thing is that I can't actually describe my act. It's um, that's why I was letting yeah, you do it. Yeah, I, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> it, I think it stems from the fact that there's many, many reasons for it, but it mainly comes from my mum used to say to me all the time, "If you're going to do stand-up comedy, do it in a way where people don't know what's going to come next." So the, that's kind of the the breaking, the, the the be sort of the ground, if you like, root of it all. Yeah, and then it just grew. And then it just grew, and it grew out of lots of things. It grew out of the cliche of a comedian being depressed, you know, and and uh, you know the talking to myself all just came about because I was doing a gig in Dubai and I was hating every minute of it. So I kept turning around, going, "I don't like this. Why are we here? I don't know." And then just carrying on like nothing had happened, and and then you know that just stayed. And then before you know it, it all just kind of I got the confidence of knowing how to wield those two voices, and then everything just came. And became, you know, the whole um, subversing and anarchic, you know, deliberate, yeah, b playing on people's prejudice to, the, to make them go, oh, you can't say that. But if you really break down what I've said, I've only got you thinking what you should be thinking, not actually said anything wrong at all. Yeah, which is what comedy should do yeah. in a lot of ways. So, so I like to do that, and you're right. And I remember a guy saying to me, he saw me once at the comedy store in London, and he he said, I remember watching you. Uh, and he said, I remember just after five, ten minutes just thinking this is nonsense and just going to the bar. And he said, then I went to another comedy club like a few months later on and I was with friends. And he said, then you came on. I was like, oh, no. And he said, I watched it for about five or ten minutes and just went, oh, it's just ridiculous. And he said, and then again, he said, by chance, you, I was at another comedy night and you were on again. And he said, but then I no got it. You. <laughs> he said, I, I got it. And then he, this, he was telling me this at the end of a tour show. He said, it's really weird. I just thought it was rubbish. And then I suddenly went, oh, no, no, I get this now. And I think the thing is as well, there's nothing to get. That's the, that's the, that's the clue. You know, yeah. I think people were looking for the ba boom, but there isn't the ba boom, but there is. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, th that was great. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> these um, the voices that you use on stage. I yeah. understand these are voices that you've said before. I've been all, I've always been with you, and it's just something that yeah, they've always to been there. I've always yeah. had these voices nagging me. Everyone has that. In, they're in a in a demon, don't they? They have it, and I kind of have a few. Uh, it's always the thing with comics being depressed, but it's true. And uh, I was in therapy again, as you are, and the guy said to me, do you know what a drama triangle is? And I said, no. And he says, it's where you have a protagonist, uh, the child, and the, and the saviour generally is the adult of you. So you go around in this drama triangle. And he said, that's what you've created on stage. Oh, right. So it's these two. Yes, and then me out the front trying to save everything. And I went, yeah. oh, wow. So it was because of, obviously, my depths of depression. Yeah. I, I was at, the, at my lowest ebb and that was the point I just started doing this stuff so maybe there's something in that. I do think Without so. Without too deep with it all. I, I know, not to, get, not to get too deep on it but it is something, I mean like that, there is sort of a thing about comics and depression and that um, but the way that you can incorporate your mental health into your comedy, I mean is that something that you've seen other uh, comedians do? I don't think, no, no, I, do, I didn't, I haven't deliberately done it. I've just, done, it's just, it's, you know, we were talking about it with me and Richard who, who looked after me and we were saying, you know, he actually said this to me. <clears throat> he said, you don't suffer with mental health, you are mental health. And I thought that's brilliant, that's what it is. And I think anyone with mental health, now it's become a thing and it looks like I'm jumping on a bandwagon, but I'm not. I just want to help people out. And if you're more than welcome to call me or contact me if you want on an email, if you want any help, it's terryalderton at me.com. Email me, it's fine. Um, if you want to talk about it, uh, because I think it's once you 
have found that you are there and you're quite happy to go, oh, that's what I'm about, any of us, right? Because mm -hmm. pretty much I think more than don't do. Uh, I think you can own it then. And then you go, right, this is, this is cool now because I'm owning it. So I know when it's going to happen. I know when it's going to re rear its ugly head. And a lot of it's to do with chemical imbalances, of course, and everyone's got their own story to tell. But for me, you know, I, I've kind of read a lot of stuff and I kind of went, I'm not wearing these labels, you know, that mm -hmm. everyone puts these labels on you which I did in my act in Edinburgh this year, which is quite ironic, being an Essex boy, you'd think I'd wear labels. Mm. So, yeah, I mean, if you if you want to, you know, it don't write nasty emails to me, because I'll just delete them, but if you want to, you seriously want any help, you know, you're more than email me. That's my personal email as well. There you go. Yeah, because <laughs> um, I, I think it's important. I think it's really important. And my yeah. show this year, and, and what I do do on stage, is it is about the opening of my mind. It's, it's a mind, it's a bipolar mind, I think they call it, but, you know, it's the manic and the and the lows and all that, and that's how my act kind of works. It's, it's kind of an observational comedy, Yeah. but I'm not going, hey, you know what it's like when you... Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm not doing that, I'm doing stuff that hopefully you're going, I recognise this and I don't know why. Yeah, because it does, even watching you, it f feels like it's very physical comedy, like you leave absolutely everything on stage. How do you even sort of get into that zone, and when do you come off, or are you just wrecked? Do you even want to talk yeah, to people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I would talk to people, but... Just going back to this year's Edinburgh show, because mm. it is so... It was a musical, wasn't it? Yeah, it, it yeah. was, but it wasn't, but it was. But yeah. It, but it wasn't, <laughs> but it was. But right? it was. <laughs> but it was so... Yeah, it's exhausting, not just physically, because the show, believe it or not, if you saw it, you know, there was times in the show where I would ad-lib, and I'd say to the audience, this, I'm ad-libbing now. You know, the rest of it's written, which got a big laugh, because it, you would probably sit there going, how can you have written this, you know? But we did, we did do it. It's my, me mainly wrote it with, with Richard Melvin and Sam Callis, and you know we, we brought this crazy world together, and then we had a brilliant music guy called Owen Parker who does loads of stuff for the Pet Shop Boys and Robbie mm. Williams and what have you. And then I've got this guy we call him Paul, Boy Wonder, Sean Kerwin, who did all, all the sound production on my radio shows and what have you, and he's like a genius. Amazing. Genius. Terry, people don't know you for your stand-up, but they may know you for your TV presenting and acting roles as yes, well, yes. including, of course, EastEnders. EastEnders. So tell us, what was it like to play um, Terry the Spragan. boyfriend? Terry Spragan. Terry of I, the iconic Bionic... Bi bionic. Ter <laughs> Terry Spragan, I used to play him. Bianca. I used to play him, like, like, because like, people go, he's yeah, so he's fat on the show, and I go, well, it's because I'd play him, you know, I'd play him like, he's like a cabbie, isn't he? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, just quite funny, being Terry Spragan, just, you know, bumped him up. So, there you go. But also, also, the other thing is people forget, I was also in London's Burning as well. You were, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is funny. But yes, EastEnders. Uh, yeah, interesting. Didn't want to do it. I read that. Didn't you didn't want to do, do it, it initially. What was your, what was holding you Just back? Just didn't want to do it. I was a comedian and I was a bit lost in comedy and I didn't want to do it and I'd been doing what I'd been doing and I just thought maybe I'm a bit too you know, alternative for this kind of thing. And then my wife is saying, you know, you're not enjoying stand-up, so why do, why wouldn't you just do it? You know, it's an experience. Mm. And then uh, Julia Crampsey said, just come and see me. I was in Edinburgh 2013. She said, just come and talk to me about it. So I took a spoon. I've told this story so many times. I took a spoon, I put the spoon on the table, went, that's for you, Julia. And she went, what's that? I said, I'd rather poke my own eyes out with that than be an EastEnders. <laughs> She went, no, don't be like that. Say how you really feel. Yeah, I know. But that was the point. I really wanted to kill it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just wanted to, to, to kill it and then I burn that bridge, if you like. And then mm. that's because I'm good at doing that. And then she spoke to me and then um, I spoke to Dominic Treble Collins, who was the boss at the time. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, another fellow Irishman. And then I, um, yes. I went, all right then. Fine. And I really enjoyed it. And yeah. then Patsy said she came out. I remember she came out off the set, off the studio, off the, off the stage. You yeah. come into the dressing rooms and she went, I'm going to, I'm going to LA. And I went, what? She goes, I'm going to LA. And you know, I've decided me and, me and Richard are going to just take the kids and go to LA. And I went, oh, right. And she went, no, you'll be all right. Cause you know, they like you upstairs. I went, they might like me upstairs. I said, but I write things and you know, they're like three, six months ahead and now they've got to rewrite everything. Yeah. So I said, we're all going. She went, no, no, you'll be fine. Little did she know, as I did know, Terry was packing his bags as he well. He was packing his bags, <laughs> and guess what? I drove them out in my cab. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Lord. And would you ever go back if Bianca went back? Or She's never going to go back. Patsy won't. Really? I think, I think, well, from what I know and have heard, you know, I see, I see Sid quite often, and, and he says that she's Sid actually... Sid played Ricky, isn't it? Yeah, Sid yeah, Owen, sorry, yeah. yeah. Sid Owen, Ricky, yeah. He said that she's, like, having a ball out there. And from really? what I've read and stuff, yeah, mm. I don't think she'd be back. I mean, why would she? I think her, her kids are doing really well out there as well now. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, so, I don't know, I don't know. Would I go back into it? I, I wouldn't say I wouldn't go back into it. I'd rather my comedy career uh, 
keep going because I yeah. think you know. Would you choose comedy over acting? Oh uh, no, I'd rather I'd rather be. Uh, look, the thing is, I think I'm onto something good, and I think this year in Edinburgh I galvanised my thing. You yes. know, I think more people have learnt my language now. You know, like it's when people are trying to learn a language, or you're learning a song, or you're learning a play, and you're learning lines, and all of a sudden you go, oh, I've got this now. Yeah. And I think slowly, slowly, I think slowly the people have come along, and I think this now I've galvanised it. I really do believe it, and I think now is my time. So I've got some good things off the back of Edinburgh. I've got a, I've got a four thirty, six thirty, sorry, radio commission for Radio Four, which is that's that's really good to get that as a comedian and yeah, to be absolutely. a working class boy and get it as well. Yeah. And then uh, I've got other really good meetings, but I can't go into that. And I know no. people always said it, but I've got one really particularly good meeting with someone who wants to do stuff with with a really big channel. So oh right, so big things. So hopefully, ahead, yeah, yeah, we can get some. And I want to do my thing. Yeah. Not in an arrogant way. There's no point yeah, in just your own unique thing, doing a yeah. sketch show. I want to do my thing. Yeah. So if and I can do my thing. of course, we can see you thing. in Galway at the Vodafone Comedy Carnival in October. Yeah, which is a brilliant festival. Yes. I know it looks like I'm long, of course it is. No, it is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And it's run by the brilliant Kevin Healy, who well, has, has, has a little party just, Kevin. Has a good little party. <laughs> oh, be careful of the Irish accent when you're down there. <laughs> Derek, it was so lovely to meet Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks a million. Thanks, darling. Thanks, for Thanks very much. Thanks very much. Nice one.